Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, I'm going to be doing NHL game, not reviews, reactions. I'm going to go over every one. I watched all the games, uh, and uh, we're gonna. I'm going to give you my reaction to what happened last night, May 3rd, and uh, the first game of the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. And, well, Western Conference, too. There was a Western Conference game as well. But I'm going to take a look at them, give you my reaction. There's a lot of cool stuff that happened last night. Um, some areas where uh, my picks, I'm like, yeah, see, see, I said. All right, I'll talk about that in a second, but you know what I mean. Sub yourself up. You can be part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show where we talk all things hockey all the time. And you can come on and give your opinion. I will talk back with you. It's totally interactive, and it's not a safe place. No, not always. <laughs> I don't. There's no rules really. You just go in there and fly. And uh, I'm not going to get offended if you're easily offended. It's not the place to go. Then people that are easily offended generally don't know it, right? Basically, if you get offended really at anything, it's probably not for you. All right, Pearl of Wisdom Show. Go check it out. Let's take a look. My reaction on the fly to the games last night. First game, of course, was uh, was on the board was the Penguins and the Rangers. Three, oh, third overtime it took, and Brian Russ puts it away. Uh, sorry, Malkin. Malkin puts it away. But, I mean, the overtime was awesome, but really the story about this game to me, was the Penguins being the savvy veterans that they are. Crosby just crushed this game. Um, I would say, I think Sidney Crosby was the game, to tell you the honest truth. Malkin had his part, but the difference uh, between like the regular season and the playoffs, obviously, is being able to stay on an even keel and not get shook, really. And I took the Rangers to win this series, but I did so wincing. And, of course, the same reason why a lot of other people took this is because they were, I mean, you got to Smith, right, for the Penguins. That was the thing. But in the back of my mind, I was talking about it. It might not matter with the Penguins because if the Rangers are playing tight and – if they are not moving, when, when a team is playing tight, what often happens is they just don't move the puck fast enough. And the Penguins have been there, done that. They're not nervous. They're not scared at all. And they didn't look like it last night. They look like they, they basically own the game, to tell you the honest truth. Shesterkin, what did he stop, like 80 shots or something like that? Over 80 shots? It, well, let's take a look at it. Um, he was, he was amazing like he always is, but you're not going to win a series having your goaltender have to do that every game, especially against a Pittsburgh. 83 shots. That's crazy. And a lot of them were good shots, too. The Rangers put 68 their way. Of course, the big story was DeSmith cramping up. And uh, in the third period where I think everybody, including me, went – all right, the Rangers are going to take this now. You got Louis Domingue in there. It's cold. You not shouldn't be ready for this type of uh, uh, competition. But Pittsburgh just played it perfect again. There, they know Pittsburgh knows that you know they don't have the best goaltending back there right now. They don't have a flurry or somebody like that. So they just played a possession game, moved the puck really fast, and played their game. And at the very least they figured we'll outscore them. We we'll just give it the best we got, and they gave it the best we got. Where the Rangers, people, did, did they give them the best that they had? I mean, I think they gave full effort, but they played like they were moving the puck way too fast almost. Uh, I know that just sounds like I just contradicted myself. Moving the puck quickly also means moving it to the right places. I found that the Rangers were trying to dump it out uh, a lot, um, passing it up to guys that were already covered and then just, you know, kind of doing, trying to rugby style it. And that's just not the Rangers game. Um, so Pittsburgh got them off their game. And, you know, you got guys like Gunsel who uh, 
his money in the playoffs, probably thanks to a guy like Crosby who plays on his line and helps him keep an even keel and all those sort of things like that. Um, scores two goals. Brian Russ pots an easy one in the third. Uh, that was on a five on three. And then, of course, we cannot not talk about this game without talking about the disallowed goal. And uh, I don't know. Honestly, okay, for me, it you got to take a different angle to the net there. It, it didn't look like he was being pushed into the net. Um, he, he, it's just the way it is in the NHL. He was in the blue paint, and Domingue is in the blue paint, and he made some serious contact. Tell me what you think. Do, do you think that was a, a goal? Do you think that should have been um, – 3-2 there. I know when I first saw it, here's the thing. When I first saw the goal, I thought, okay, that's a goal. Because it looked like he was pushed into the goaltender. Then they go into review. They decide that they didn't get pushed into the goaltender. And, uh, of course, then he, we know what happened. But to me, that's not the biggest story of the game. To me, the biggest story of the game is that Pittsburgh really felt like they were in control the whole game. And the Rangers now have got to find a way, uh, hopefully with their veterans, to um, get back to being even keel again. That's what I got from the game there. That it, it, They weren't... They weren't playing very even keel. They were playing like they were rushing, nervous, all of that. And that's what I was kind of afraid of when I picked the Rangers because I don't like taking green teams in the playoffs. And, you know, as it turns out, I might end up having to kick myself in the end, but we'll find out. Uh, Capitals versus the Florida Panthers. This is basically the same thing in a different game in a lot of ways. Um, the Panthers looked nervous. They weren't playing their game at all. They were playing back on their heels. I mean, you do that against a Capitals team who has has been there and done that. Oshi, Kuznetsov, Ovechkin. Um, I, I took the Panthers to win this series, but I didn't think it was going to be easy either. Uh, I thought, now, this, of course, can still happen. I think the Panthers have to play all out balls out offensive turn this into an offensive game as much as possible. Um, they can beat the Capitals if they do that. But if they play back on their heels like they did yesterday, uh, this is going to be actually a short series. And that was my concern with the Capitals, again, is that I, I, I went against, with my picks, I went against my rule, I guess, that you always take the team with experience in the playoffs. Uh, you know, they they do have some guys with experience there, and that's why I think it's I think it's a little more likely that the Panthers can come back from this because you've got Giroux, Bennett. Um, you know, Bennett's played some pretty tough series in Calgary. Giroux's made it to the finals before. Pretty sure that's one of the main reasons why they picked up a guy like that. Sherratt there can calm everybody down, remind them what it was that got them there. Because that's the way they're going to win. There's no way the Panthers are going to be able to play a trap against the Capitals. And uh, the other thing I had was this Laviolette versus Brunette. Laviolette has, you know, he's he's a cup-winning coach. He's taken teams to the finals. He took Philly to the finals when they shouldn't even have been there. You know, that's – and Brunette, what has he done? He's did nothing. As a coach in the playoffs, actually didn't even do all that much in the playoffs when he was a, when he was a player. But um, so that's the challenge here. And uh, the one thing I thought might be the issue wasn't really an issue last night. Bob Brosky actually played uh, very well in this game, I thought. And I think if he plays like that, Florida can make a pretty good chance of uh, coming back in, in this game. Uh, but Washington looked in control again, like I said last night. Uh, they had a little better fate than Pittsburgh in doing so in the sense that they didn't have to go to overtime, especially three overtimes, and uh, have all that energy 
save a little more energy for future rounds if they happen to get there. But they outshot the Capitals 38 to 32. Um, and I just, it's the same as, as a Pittsburgh game. They just, it felt to me like they were in more control. But I think the Panthers can turn this around. I think they have, uh, I think they have the ability to, the players there to calm this situation down and bring it back. Now, the thing I, like I said, I'm a little bit concerned about would be the coach. So this is going to be big on Burnett here. He's got an experienced guy on the other side that knows what to say, knows how to get the best of his players. And a lot of players that, you know, they're, they're the capitals now are smelling blood. So they're going to come out the next game, I believe, putting a whole lot of energy in that first period to keep this momentum going. The Panthers have to beat that next game. Simple as that. Uh, down low, do what they do. Aggressive forecheck. It's the only way they're going to win. I also, is a reason why I didn't take them to win the cup, because I'm just not so sure this team is going to be able to play. Uh, you know, every once in a while, you got to play a trap. Every once in a while, you got to play desperate defense. And I'm not sure the Panthers are built for that. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, next, Avalanche. Oh, it's just, it's just sad. Uh, Riddich was left. Uh, the Predators weren't ready to play this game right from the get-go. Uh, it looked to me from the faces on the Predators players last night that they looked almost overwhelmed about this game. And the Avalanche came out with full confidence. I mean, they've been sort of saving themselves for the playoffs, honestly. If you look at... Uh, if you look at the way they went into the playoffs, there was a lot of games there where they just played perimeter. They looked for tips. They didn't uh, physically try to drain themselves. They tried to be in peak physical condition for this game. And uh, they certainly, McCarr was just a magician last night. It was absolutely unbelievable um, to watch McCarr chew this Predators team apart 7-2 and it very it didn't really look like the Predators were ever in the game. Are they going to be able to turn around and change it? I mean, I called this to be a sweep and I called the Avalanche. And, I, well, I mean, it certainly looks like it's going to now. This is when the playoffs will surprise you, though. Uh, the Predators did try to turn it into a bit of a brawl in the second and third period. They want to send a message that, you know, we're still here and we're going to fight. And you're not, you know, this isn't just going to be a rollover if it does happen that way. And uh, so we'll see. I, I imagine there'll be more of a fight next game. Uh, of, of course, uh, they'll be a little better prepared to be. Uh, they, they all, the, the only way the Predators are going to win this series is if they just hit, 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 hit. Battle, 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 battle everywhere. Tougher on the stick. That's their game. They're going to outwork you, out tough you. Um, you're using their physical strength at every and then until they are exhausted. That's the reason, though, that I kind of thought the Predators are pooch out here, and I thought they would in the regular season because they were playing like that in the beginning of the regular season, all the way up until like every game was a battle for the Predators. They turned it into a battle, and that's what they'll have to do here to to, to be able to get the Avalanche. I just. I just think they're going to run out of gas if they do happen to be able to, you know, maybe win one game that way. Uh, next, the Flames versus the Stars. And uh, you're going to, this is going to be an under series. Uh, the Flames, again, last night played very calm, very confident. Uh, they did get most, they did get most of the shots, I believe. I'm going to look, I'll look it up here. Um, and the Stars, they fought hard to, you know, blocking shots, all that kind of stuff that the Stars do. But I really, yeah, there's 26-16. I really thought the Flames just, just contained the Stars pretty much everywhere on the ice. And that was their going to be their game. It's, Sutter knows what to do in the playoffs. Sutter knows how to communicate what to do in the playoffs. And um, he knows that the Dallas Stars really are not strong depth-wise. Their biggest players, 
Robertson and you know, they are, are young. Robertson and Hints are super young, and that's their best players. Like, forget about I don't care about their highest pay, play bears like J- Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. And you'll hear it over and over again, a million times from anything that you ever listen to. If they're going to win, they need big games from those guys. But they got the wrong team here to be playing against. Um, Calgary knows how to contain players very, very well. Sutter, LA used to do it to a freaking T when they were winning cups. And a lot of these players play for LA. They know what Sutter expects. Um, he knows how to communicate it. And they grab guys like Toffoli. Lucic is, is actually a fantastic communicator. That's probably his greatest value now to be able to get it across to everybody what it is that they have to do. They've, they've got guys that have won cups. They know how not to be up too high, too low, all of those things. And that's the difficulty when you got the Rangers. Uh, they there's not too, they do have some veteran guys, but you got young guys. Young guys are known to get really go highs and lows and it drains their energy. And the playoffs are that. You don't want to drain energy as much as you possibly can, especially when you're talking about stress and anxiety. That's why veteran teams have a tendency to win more often than young teams. Every once in a while, you'll get some young young teams that uh, have that that put it together somehow. Maybe you have a coach or whatever that can calm them down. I'm going to be really interested to see what the Rangers do in the next series, uh, next game, because that's what's going to have to Florida, New York. They're going to have to calm down. Um, the Predators got to battle. They got to fight hard and just try to turn it into a brawl as much as they possibly can. And the Dallas Stars, that's the one where I don't know if there's an answer. Um, if Calgary's playing a perfect containment game, I don't think Dallas has got it in them. They're just going to block shots all day, get out shot like crazy, and probably see the score be similar to the one that we just saw, 3 nothing, 3-2, stuff like that. All right, that's my full 42. I thought I'd go in and try this out, see how it goes. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section. If you've not been part of this, sub yourself up. And uh, I'm going to send this out to all the places in the land. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.